for God to use us is a great privilege. God can use anyone. He can use a donkey. He can use the elements. He can use man. He can use situations because if we study the life of Jesus, we will discover that Jesus Christ in his parable often used situations, existing situations and circumstances to speak to the people that they may understand. Now we are talking about you, a human being made in the image of God. So God would want to use you. Hallelujah. Look at verse number six again. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we see here that light has been shone in our hearts. God has shed his light into our hearts as believers. When we have the light of God, we cannot walk in darkness. Darkness is foreign to God. God does not walk in darkness. Amen. God is light. He walks in light. Darkness represents the devil. So when we as the children of light, we are able to discover the will of God for our life and we walk in it. And that's the greatest fulfillment and achievement that we can ever have. Hallelujah. All right. So it says there in verse 7, but we have this treasure. Somebody say treasure. All right. We have this treasure in even vessel. I spoke to you the other time concerning the delicacy of this vessel. It is delicate. Take an even vessel. Take a, a, a pot, a clay pot. Drop it on the ground. It will shatter. It will shatter. Amen. And that speaks of you as a carrier, as a container of the light. God has chosen to put his light, his glory, his power, human beings, delicate vessels. One moment they are here, the next they are gone. Amen. Hallelujah. When we fully understand that the soul of man does not die, it doesn't perish. We'll discover that even this vessel, the Eden vessel that we are speaking about, even though it dies, yet we shall live. Hallelujah. Amen. Though he dies, yet shall he live. That's what Jesus Christ said. Meaning that we may die here, but yet we are alive with him. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The greatest gain any human being can ever have is not that he won lottery, he got a promotion. No, the greatest gain is that when our work is all done, we stand with God forever. That's the greatest gain. That's the greatest gain. So what will guarantee that we be with God for all eternity is when we are able to utilize the light, the glory, the ability that God has put in this Eden vessel called our bodies. Praise God. Amen. Our bodies are fragile. That's why today you can see, oh, this person is okay. The next moment he's in the hospital. Eden vessel. Eden vessel. Hallelujah. Today you are fine. The next thing, the headache is pounding your head. Eden vessel. You need to have the full understanding of who you are. An Eden vessel. And that Eden vessel could either be tied and connected with God for all eternity or be connected with the devil, the enemy of God in hell for all eternity. The choice is ours. What we make of the, the opportunities that we have, the relationship that we have with God at this point in time is what will determine where we spend eternity. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. 
in the Sunday school this morning, Pastor Fee was, main, was saying something about lying, right? The Bible says all liars shall find themselves where? In the lake of fire. Why? The devil is a liar. That's the reason. So when we lie, we follow the devil where he is going to be for all eternity. Amen, somebody. He said you can escape. You can run away and, and get away with lying now. But if something happens suddenly and you pass on, that lie will be against you. You've lied. Amen. He didn't say some liars. All liars every one of them amen you, do, do you know it's easy to lie it's easy to lie it's one of the easiest things to do amen all it takes is one word mm. did you know one word isn't that easy praise god and sometimes words are not even involved did you the shaking of the head mm -mm. no no word was spoken but the action that's why sometimes they say action speaks louder than words hallelujah amen somebody all right so we need to understand that our vessel that god has given to us is hidden so number one we, we need to also take care of the vessel Take care of it. Amen. You can sleep three hours a night and your Eden vessel will not break down. Night after night, night after night. What are you doing working? Your Eden vessel will break down shortly. It will break down shortly. Hallelujah. Neither should we oversleep. Because when we oversleep, it affects the spirit of man do you get it now we, there, there needs to be a balance the spirit of man needs to communicate with god and therefore we we need to be able to feed the spirit the spirit of god resides in the eden vessel it resides there it needs to be fed also strengthened energized and properly positioned to communicate with the with the father of all spirits referring to God through his word through prayer these are two basic avenues that the spirit connects with God prayer and the word of God hallelujah especially when we pray in the spirit the Bible says in Romans 8 26 we know not what we should pray for as we ought to but the Spirit himself make it intercession through me amen through me with groanings which cannot be uttered and God understands the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession according to the will of God hallelujah so when we pray in the spirit we are communicating with god the spirit of god is praying through us in a way that will command access into the very presence of god so it's important for the spirit of man to be constantly in tune with the spirit of god this way your spirit man is hydrated if i may use the word it's not dry it's hydrated jude 20 says and ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so when we pray in the spirit we actually fortify our spirit we build ourselves up hallelujah amen and when we take good care of this ethan vessel through proper rest proper nutrition and then exercise when you walk from your houses and you walk to church that's some exercise when you go to the farm to weed that's some exercise hallelujah amen somebody there are various things that we do even around the house that's exercise 
Amen, somebody. If the market is not too far away, of course, walk to the market. That's exercise. Amen. So don't just try and make things too easy for yourself. Don't try and make it too easy for yourself. If you can walk from here to the junction, why don't you do it? It's good for your body. Why waste money for a taxi from here to the junction? That's not far away. It's a waste. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So the Eden vessel, speaking of the body is fragile. We need to take care of it as we take care of the spirit man. This way there is a balance. Amen. There is a balance. And then we will live long enough to fulfill the will of God for our lives. Can I hear? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So look, please, with me to the very next verse. It says we are hard pressed. Somebody say hard pressed. All right. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken struck down now take note of these words that paul was using here paul is not speaking about somebody else he's speaking about he himself and the apostles of the lord okay so let's take it again hard pressed somebody say hard pressed okay so you are hard pressed all around with with situations with trials amen with negative circumstances now i want you to see what how fragile on the one hand the eden vessel is and on the other hand the grace of god so paul here he says we are hard pressed on every side yet hallelujah yet not crushed oh that's powerful yet hard pressed yet so what produced that yet grace grace and mercy the bible says it's not of him that will it neither of him that run it but of god that showeth mercy hallelujah hallelujah the eden vessel as long as we are in tune with the spirit of god we draw grace from him and when grace comes grace neutralizes up to an extent the ravages amen against our bodies against this eden vessel the attacks against it paul said we are pressed yet he says we are what not crushed hallelujah perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed. Can you see the word again? Struck down, knocked down, but not destroyed. I, I like the word that Paul was using here. But, amen. Verse 9 says, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Hallelujah. So Paul is saying here that death is there against the body, but yet the life is still there. So we find that the life of God or the intervention of the Spirit of God upon our bodies helps to sustain this Eden vessel. So when we are talking about the Eden vessel, how fragile it is. Thank God for the grace. Thank God for the grace. The grace helps to handle these things that the devil will bring against the Eden vessel. Because I tell you something, the devil is really against you as a believer. You are the prime target. Not the unbeliever. If you now live your life like an unbeliever, or with the mindset of an unbeliever that thinks oh everything is okay they have no eternity in view but you have eternity in view 
and god wants you as a believer to make sure constantly constantly amen keep eternity in view because you have an adversary the adversary wants you to miss it miss it take the wrong step miss it that's what he wants and he's counting that when you miss it, it it opens a door for him to hit but thank god for his mercy thank god for his grace hallelujah amen somebody so the grace of god comes and balances things up hallelujah look at the the world-renowned singers someone like which names now are really known is it beyonce amen beyonce i don't even is it beyonce or beyonce anyway amen why haven't they died hello why haven't they died all of those top singers they are not ashamed or afraid to identify with the devil and they go ahead and even publicize it you will see them they will the illuminati signs or something you know and, and they are not afraid they are, they are telling you look i belong to the devil amen somebody why are they not dead it's from time to time you will find one of them will pass away but the majority are still alive michael jackson he died right oh he he was an icon amen but suddenly his life was snuffed off straight away to hell the devil is done with him amen for the other ones yes it's not yet time why they are useful to the devil he's using them to get as many as possible into hell so he said but why do, why 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 doesn't god just strike them that god is not like that amen you think god just likes killing people you are evil i kill you you are you are mm -mm. amen the mercy of god god knows that the little time they have can never be compared with eternity no matter how long they live it's appointed unto man wants to die after that the judgment they are going to hell and so god won't just kill them for what so the devil will say okay they are useful they are useful up to this point i, I, I won't strike them i won't kill them the devil is a killer but he doesn't just kill he only kills if he finds out that the person is no longer useful and then also the protection of god is now away from that individual then he can kill you are useless from this point i've used you i no longer need you so go and wait for me in hell hallelujah and you now think that God also would not protect his own if they are useful. Amen. And if God is sparing you, it is still because he's giving you time to reorganize your life so that you can be more fruitful. That's what it says in John chapter 15. I am the vine, you are the branches the branch that bringeth forth fruit i will prune hallelujah so that he will bring forth more fruit and the branch that does not bring forth fruit it's going to dry up it's going to dry up god will just put you aside and after a while you dry up and you perish so that's the reason why it's dangerous for a believer not to bear fruit. So ask yourself, am I bearing fruit in this Eden vessel? Hallelujah. Am I bearing fruit? 
Am I bearing fruit? It's a question we need to constantly remind and ask ourselves. Am I bearing fruit? If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, why don't you pray with me? Bow your heads and pray with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you today as sinner. I believe you died for me and you rose again. I ask that you come into my heart and give me a new heart of righteousness. Forgive me all my sins. I renounce Satan and every works of darkness in my life and I receive the gift of eternal life today. Thank you Jesus for saving me.